QuickBooks Online 2024 Sales by Customer Graphs. Get ready and some coffee because we're diving into it with Intuit's QuickBooks Online 2024. Here we are online in our browser searching for QuickBooks Online test drive, looking for the result that has Intuit.com and the URL, Intuit being the owner of QuickBooks, selecting the United States version of the software, and then we're going to verify that we're not a robot. Opening up our major financial statement reports like we do every time. Reports on the left-hand side. We're in the favorites, right-clicking on that balance sheet so we can open it in a new tab. We're going to right-click on the P&L, profit and loss, otherwise known as the income statement, opening it as well in a new tab. Let's go to that middle tab. We just opened up, close up the ham boogie, and we're going back in time, back to 2023, 0101-23 tab, 1231-23 tab. First, a word from our sponsor. <laughs> Yeah, uh, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever, because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial-free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Run it to refresh it. Then we're going to tab to the right, close up the hamburger. We're going to go back to 2023. 2024 is looking scary. I'm going back to 03. 010123 tab, 123 tab. We're going to run it to refresh that one. These are our major two financial statement reports. Most of the reports giving us more information about one or multiple line items, more detail on one of these financial statement reports. This time, we're continuing on our quest for the graphs. So we're looking at the graphs here and we're exporting to Excel to create them. Normal graphs you might make if you're providing these to, say, a client might be backing up your income, for example, income by customer, income by product or service. You could even do a pie chart for income by account category if you wanted to do that as well. But uh, and then you also could some easy graphs. You can go into the balance sheet. We did one for the accounts receivable last time, breaking out the AR by customer who owes us the money. Just an easy graph to make fairly quickly. You could make a graph about your categories of assets as well, which you might start out by doing a accounts uh, a balance sheet summary report because it'll have less subtotals. Uh, and then we did the accounts payable as well. And you could do the same for the liabilities if you wanted to and break out all your liabilities in a pie chart if you wanted to as well, which you might want to start off with a summary balance sheet to do that. But this time we're going into the income lines, remembering that income over here is represented on the profit and loss by account. Usually the account being what, you know, what we receive the income for by category, the things that we're basically doing, goods and services by category. We usually don't put a lot of detail in here on the income statement by customer. We don't make accounts by customer because we can have a subledger. As we discussed when we looked at the subledgers, we can have a subledger by customer. We don't usually put a whole bunch of detail about every item or service in each different account over here either because we can usually have a subledger. However, remember that the subledgers will only be here if we're using the major sales forms to record revenue, those being the invoice forms, the sales receipts. If you're court recording revenue possibly with the bank feeds and using a deposit form, you're gonna lose some of the depth in reporting for these subsidiary ledger reports, such as the sales by customer or the sales by item most likely so in that case you might want to put more detail on your uh, profit and loss report in terms of making your sales icon items or line items or accounts for actual customers 
The other thing you want to remember here is that the subledger might not tie out exactly to what is in your profit and loss because the QuickBooks system does not force you to add a customer every time you post something to an income line item the way it does on the balance sheet side of things for both the accounts receivable and the accounts payable where it does force you to choose either a customer or vendor so that your subledgers can't be out of whack. But if you're using the sales forms to record your sales, your sales should be fine. But you might, you might make a little adjustment to make sure it ties out exactly when you, do your, when you do your pie charts, if it doesn't tie out exactly, which might still be relevant or be useful for the pie charts because it's kind of an estimate for the visual. So let's go to the tab to the left. Let me show you what I mean. And we're gonna go down to the reports on the left-hand side, close up the hand boogie, and we'll scroll down to the sales side, the income statement supporting type reports down here, sales and customers. And then we have those two ones down here. We had the, what did we have? We had income by customer, and then we had the sales by customer. I believe the sales by customer is what we want because I don't need the expenses that were taken out. Let's open them both up, I'll just show you. If I right click and open the income by customer, and then I right click and I open the sales by customer, they sound like the same thing, but they're slightly different. Let's see, we're gonna go up top and say a range change. Let's go from 010123 tab, 123 tab, run it to refresh it. There's our income by customer. You can see an expense line that will include like cost of goods sold possibly, where we don't, maybe we don't need that. You could do the net income, net income impact, but usually you're probably looking into the top line when you're making your graphs. Therefore, we'll use this report, closing the hand boogie, bringing it back to 2023, 0101.23 tab, 1231.23 tab, run it to refresh it, and there we have it. So once again, we have these subtotals in here, which might be because we have uh, jobs in place within it. And we don't typically want those because those are gonna throw off or make it more difficult for us to make a graph. I would just like to have my lines and then, and then the total. That'll be the easiest thing to use. So possibly I could collapse them, boom, and now I've just got a straight list. That looks like really easy to make some graphs from if we just export this to Excel. That's perfecto, just like my friend Mundo would do it. Perfecto like Mundo. So then, uh, then I was gonna say something else. I totally forgot. There was something important. Hold on a second. I remember, uh, note that if I go down to the total down here, 102805, that should tie out to our income statement on this side. If I look at my total income, 10,200, it's off by $80. So possibly something got recorded with a journal entry or something that didn't have a customer or something happened, it's off by 80. But 80 is somewhat immaterial possibly in our thought process here. So the pie chart should still be good based on this sub ledger. And I could just adjust it for the difference if I need to, so to make sure it ties out exactly to, to what is on my, my reports. So everything looks nice and neat. So we'll keep that in mind if I remember here. So I'll hit the drop down. Let's export it to Excel so we can make some pie charts from it and possibly some bar charts and you know whatever we're feeling into at the time, whatever we think our customer would appreciate and enjoy. So there we have it. Let's enable the editing. Now, I've, I'm gonna put this on our other worksheet that we've been working on. If you don't have this other worksheet, that's okay. You can do it uh, on, on the export, but I'm imagining that we're printing all of these reports out at one time. And then I would like to add this one to it, using it to make our graphs. So how can I get this tab over there? I can right click on the tab. If I have both worksheets open, move or copy, I'm gonna copy it over to the month in reports, boom. And then, okay, pulls it over, first tab. I'm just gonna drag it to the right, drag it to the right, there it is. I'm gonna call this my sales by customer data. And then we'll just use this as our data. And then I'll, maybe I'll put my graphs in another one and I'll hide this tab so that I can print it and it doesn't show up my data tab, but only my cool graphs that I got from the data tab. All right, we'll do this a little bit more quickly because we've seen a similar process in the past. I just want to trim this down, clean it up, take the data, make a pie chart. So I'm going to go from one to five, right click 
and delete all of this. I don't need the header. I don't need the total on down to do, 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 do right click and delete. I'm going to make it all one format for the entire sheet, which I want to be like this cell to start off with, which is Calibri 11. So I'm just going to format that and format paint the entire worksheet. And then I'll right click and I'll format it the way I want it to look. So it's all uniform. Everything's the same. You're not going to confuse me with all this different looking stuff. We're going to make it currency, negative numbers, bracketed and red. Get rid of the dollar sign. We don't need the pennies in our worksheet here, I don't think. So let's go ahead and say, okay, I'll embold it because we need to be bold with our recording, uh, recording videos. I'm going to, you don't need to bold it possibly on your end, but that's just what my producer says that I have to be bold. And so I don't want to get fired or anything. So I'm going to be as bold as I can here. So there's, that's as bold as we can go. Excel won't let me get any more bold than that. So then I'm going to say that, uh, now if we make a, well, we have to put this into a, a filter from top to bottom. So I could go to the data here and then we could go filters and filter it this way, but I like entering a table. So I'm going to make a table out of it. Insert a table, boom. And then I could put the headers in here. This is the company. This is the customer sales. And then I'm going to sort it from top to bottom. Hitting the sort. We're going from Z to A, A. Eh? Z to A, A. Eh? All right. So then we're going to... then Now, if I make a pie chart out of this, it's, there's too much happening. Too much happening here. So, it's, so let me show you. It's going to, be a, it's going to be too small of slices of the pie. So I'll go to the home tab. We're gonna have to make some adjustments to this if I wanna make a pie chart, home tab. And charts, pie chart. Let's just do the standard pie chart and see how you've got all those really little slices and the keys too long. I mean, that's like, that's not a pie. That's not even like a candy bar. No one's gonna, no one's gonna appreciate the, the level of slice there. Uh, it's not gonna fill anyone up. So let's, let's, Let's go ahead and see if we can just take like the top 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then we'll just do 9 and then 10 will be everything else. So I'm just going to select all these. That adds up to 2, 5, 4, 6. So I'm going to make this 2, 5, 4, 6 and delete everything after it. I'm going to call this other, other. And then I'll just delete, I could just delete. Now I'm going to delete completely. I'll just delete this whole thing, the whole rows on my table and delete it. And then I might want to double check that my table, because I, I played with it, make sure it still ties out to the total that I want it to tie out to. So I'm going to say, uh, let's make a total column, table design. And I'm going to add the total rows. So there's our total. And then I'm going to compare that to what's on my report over here which 10,280. Now I'll make a slight tweak now because that one's not quite what's on my balance sheet, which is on the balance sheet or no, on my income statement, it should be 10,200, maybe 10,201 if I round it. So I'm gonna say it should be 10,201. The difference, let's just do this. If I delete this one and subtract this, then this one should be, two, four, six, six there. Now I have a total that ties out exactly to what's on my, what's on my income statement, even though it doesn't exactly tie out to what was on this report, but you, you see what I mean? Because that will fit what's on the income statement now. So then we're going to say, okay, it's still got some fairly small slices. We might even take it down uh, further than that, but let's just play with this one for now. The legend, let's bring it to the right. And uh, so that's okay, I guess. Top, left. Let's keep it on the right. I think that's the best. And then maybe I make it a little bit larger. And then we could once again say we want the data labels and maybe we want it in percent format. So more options and then percent instead of values. And then I can close that and then I can go to the format and within the word art style, I can make it white 
and then maybe bold so it stands okay i'm gonna stop talk stop talking like that what in the world is wrong with you all right note that i could now if i want to check those percentages i could say this is the percent of sales and then this is going to be equal to this number divided by the total and then if i was to select all of that stuff to format it like a percent home tab number percentify you best percentify if you want to recognize and then we'll sum it okay so there's our there's our percentages now we could have done that first and then made the pie chart if we wanted to i'm holding down shift to select the non-adjacent columns and then i'm going to the insert and pie chart this way see so i could have done it that way and then when i went to my data labels i wouldn't have had to change them because they would be in percent format already but either way you want to do it then it's up to you it's up to you so now i can select these again maybe i want like a bar graph as well insert the bar graphs are right here no that's the histogram bar graphs are here we've got the standard bar we've got now we've got the fancy looking uh bars this way we haven't done that one yet let's do one of those the 3d bars are not as deceiving I, they don't annoy me as much the 3d pie charts i feel like some 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 sneaky politician bureaucrat in the company is trying to manipulate me or something but the but the, this one i don't think is really is not as manipulative looking doesn't look like it's trying to throw off the numbers too much although it, it makes it a little less clear but i kind of like it so i'm okay with that so then i'm going to say this is going to be the data labels we could put those on the top which we can put in numbers this time which is probably more common than percentages because the percentage would be like a pie chart thing and then maybe we want to put this on a new tab just like we did before so i'm going to make a new tab and i'll copy this name right click or i'll just double click on it maybe and copy i'll put that over here but then wait double click and then get rid of the data even though it just says dat, which isn't quite right. And then I'll just copy, I'll just move these. I'm going to right click and cut this and I'm going to put it over here and paste it. And then I'll do that again. I'll just cut this and then I'll put it over here and paste it. Boom. And then let's check out the layout page layout back on over. And so it's still, maybe I don't want, maybe I want to go landscape again page layout orientation landscape because these need to be appreciated in their full glory it didn't do it that's not landscape is that landscape are you kidding me it's not doing it let me just check out oh wait a second what did i do if i go to the print preview and we look at the whole workbook Let's just go to the to the active sheet. See, it's still portrait. I told you, I told you to go. Here's another way I can go to landscape here. Okay, that'll do it too. Sometimes it gets a little wonky and it won't do what I won't do what you tell it to. It's like my dog. Okay, so then I'm gonna make this a little bit larger. And then I'll try to fit them both maybe on one page. Landscape. So maybe see if I can get them on one page landscape I'll make this one long that one can be super long this one doesn't really need to be as long I feel like because uh, it's a pie it's more of a square format so that fits on one page Let's put it down I don't put it down here and then oh oh no control Z put this here okay maybe i can put this up and then drag it down okay that's good enough this is just an example but if i print it then i don't want this sheet so we have the same thing same problem we looked at before if i go to the to the print options if i want to print the entire workbook now wait a second now it's on well wait a sec if i go to the entire workbook let's just it's going to a pdf printer and i want selected 
Now notice I'm on one chart. Sometimes it doesn't let me do it when I'm on one chart too. So if it does that, you just go on to another tab and then go back to the file, print, and then say, I wanna to go to the entire workbook. And then now it starts at the beginning. You might not have all this stuff in yours because you might not have followed uh, everything I'm doing here because I went, but the point is, see now before that I have this sheet I don't want. And then, and then I have my chart, which is uh, what I do want. So then let's close this back out. And all we have to do is hide that one. So I'm going to hide this one, right click and hide. And now I'll see these two sheets will be side by side at the end of our report. Let's go to the file. And then I don't want, I could hide the data tabs here. Like I'm going to hide this one again too. I'm going to hide that data tab. I'm going to hide this data tab. And so now we just have the graphs and not the data tabs. All right, let's go back on over file print and entire workbook. Let's check it out. Admire. We'll admire the progress, the process, the landscape. Look at that. My client is going to be so impressed. This is going to be great. So there it is. Let's print it out. Let's print it out. Let's see what it looks like in a PDF format because that's what I'm going to email or put in my cloud drive. I'm just going to save it over the top of this one. And then let's open it up and check it out in that format. I'll make it larger. So here's our reports, balance sheet reports, balance sheets. We've got our income statements. And then we've got our gra the landscape view still vertical we got the fancy ar graph that looks different and then the customer and then we've got our vendor balance graph and then we've got our ap ones that we did they got the sales graphs that look fancy and the the sales graphs that is that is gonna knock the socks off of people and apparently people like when their socks get knocked off. I'm not sure I would appreciate it myself, but that's what I, there's a saying of, anyways, that's the sales thing. We might go into uh, one, another one of sales by item in a future presentation. So look, look out for that one.